Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and this is Pointless, the quiz show where high scores count for nothing and obscurity counts for everything. Let's meet today's players. So we welcome back Anne and Lindsay first. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances, of course, to reach the final, and this is your last chance. Remind us how you did. Um, good. <laughs> you did pretty well. <laughs> it was that right. second round. The new yeah. second round did for you. No, it didn't. It was the uh, Bulgaria in the Medanta. Ah, yes, that's what it was. <laughs> yes, Bulgaria, that famous Mediterranean so coastal port. Now we're going to brush up on geography. <laughs> yeah. OK, OK. What are you hoping is going to come up today? Um, entertainment, maybe, because it's mm -hmm. not been up yet. Entertainment. I know there are other people up there, other rivals of yours, who I know yeah. would love to see entertainment come up. So uh, <laughs> let's hope it does. Very good. Well, better luck this afternoon. Thank you. Stephen and Astrid, welcome Hello. to you. Uh, how do you two know each other? Um, we met about three years ago uh, at university, uh, met on a college ski trip. Uh, college be... ski trip? Where were you? Uh, we were. Where were we? Bulgaria. Val <laughs> <laughs> Valterrent. Yeah, very very nice. good. Very, very We've good. We've known each other ever since. Each other ever since. What a brilliant skiing trip that must have been. <laughs> Fabulous. Well done. And welcome to Helen and Chris. How do you two know each other? Hello, we're ex colleagues from the post office. From the post office? Yes. Excellent. We've known each other about 20 years and have stayed friends all that time. Same post office? Uh, no, different post offices, but we kept on meeting up. Like I would go away and Chris would join me, then Chris would go somewhere else and I would join him. So we always ended up together. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, best of luck this afternoon. And finally, we welcome back Dean and Andy. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you did. Mm -hmm. Slightly worse than our rivals here. <laughs> <laughs> first round, um, walk of shame. Oh, it was a very tough first round, that one. Very it, tough. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, very best of luck this afternoon. I'm sure you will go all the way through to the final. Anyway, we will find out more about you all throughout the show. Before I go any further, there's just one more person you need to meet. The man who is an encyclopedia of knowledge. <laughs> He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hello. Hello there. How do you feel about being called an encyclopedia of knowledge? Yeah, that's, that's I'm happy mind. with that. That's One of those really, mind. really big ones, I'm Certainly guessing. Certainly everything I know is alphabetised. That's how I work. <laughs> uh, a good little show today. If you're looking for entertainment, Lindsay, you're going to have to make it all the way through to the head-to-head. -head. Oh, some entertainment sure. stuff there, but not the first couple of rounds. You can do that, you can do that. As you say, Lindsay thought that Bulgaria was a Mediterranean country. It's not too bad. Andy thought Mykonos was a Mediterranean country. So uh, we've got a clash of the titans here today. <laughs> I think the other, uh, the other pair's quaking in their boots. It's going to be quite a contest. OK. Very good. Well, thank you very much for that, Richard. Now, we've asked all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless. So we are after the most obscure answers. That is the answers that they didn't get. The fewer people who got the answer, the fewer points awarded, and the better your chance of winning. So to stay in the game with any chance of winning our jackpot, our players need to score as few points as they possibly can. But what everyone's looking to do is find a pointless answer. That's one that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add... 250 quid to the jackpot. No one won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off an impressive £2,000. <laughs> Very good. OK, let's play Pointless. Now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated and you have to be very careful because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then you will score the maximum of 100 points. Right, your first category this afternoon is... There it is, words. Words. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words that end in angle as they could. Words that end in angle. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any word in the Oxford English Dictionary that ends in the letters angle. No hyphenated words or abbreviations and no proper nouns. We won't accept, for obvious reasons, the word angle. <laughs> Very clever. Right, Anne and Lizzie, you all drew lots before the show and today you get to go first. Lindsay. 72. How many of them do you, could name, you could name? All of them. <laughs> if I gave you a day, how many do you think you could name for those? I'm trying to think how many I could name. About, about five. Um, about three I can think of. <laughs> OK, what's the most obscure 
Um, of those three? I'm hoping it's one or I'm going to look really stupid. Um, a mangle. A mangle? Yeah. When you, is that what yeah, you're Yeah, yeah. That's a mangle. Yeah. OK, you are hoping to score as few points as possible with mangle. Let's see how many people said it. Mangle. It's correct. <laughs> 45 people said mangle. Scores you 45. Richard. It's not really in, in use much these days. I've mangle. It mangle. can mean to mispronounce words as well. It can mean it's to true. cut up and hack and all sorts of things. Or a, a machine yeah. for squeezing water out of, uh, out of linen. Stephen. Um, now, I'm going to go for wangle. Wangle. With a W at the beginning. Very good. Wangle <laughs> with a W. Wangle. Yeah, go, how do you define wangle? You... <laughs> Is it even a word? Well, if it's a word, exactly. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. Astrid, I'm entirely confident. <laughs> it, it, do you mean wangle? Is that the one you wanted to say, Stephen? I think, yeah, no, I think it could, could be a low scorer, if it's a word. OK, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many people said wangle. It's good. Not bad at all. Wangle scores you 26. Wangle, Richard. Yes, it says here something dishonestly contrived or manipulated, but we, uh, we usually take it to mean to, to get something under full pretenses. tickets, isn't it? Or, yeah. You wangled some tickets. Yeah, I wangled some tickets. I've no, what else do you wangle? You shouldn't, when you say wangle too often, it loses all its meaning. Yeah, it not for me, it doesn't. <laughs> Don't say wangle too often. <laughs> plenty, of, plenty of mint left in that gum for me. Wangle. <laughs> uh, OK, very good. Wangle, 26. You've wangled yourself 26 points. Chris. Well, I hope Helen won't uh, do this to me, but I thought of strangle. Well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> Let's see how it scores. Strangle. It is correct. <laughs> strangle. It scored less than wangle. It doesn't seem to make sense at all. Strangle. 15 people said it scores you 15. Richard? I know, surprisingly, a uh, small score for strangle, but you get more years in prison for strangling than wangling, I think. <laughs> Depends which country you're in, Richard. <laughs> that is true enough. <laughs> there are certain states in America where wangling still carries the big one. <laughs> OK, Chris, well done. 15 points to you. Andy. Words ending in angle. Right. Um, not sure about this one, but we'll go for wrangle. Wrangle, yes. which is wangle with an R. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wangle with that's, an R. That sounds good. It's wangle with an R. I know. It gives yeah. you a chance to say wangle a few more times. Yeah, exactly. Well. Wangle. <laughs> yeah, still meaning something to me. <laughs> Strangle scored only 15. Let's see how wrangle does. Wrangle. It's correct. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Good score, Andy. Wrangle nets you 18. Wrangle, Richard? Yeah, uh, an angry dispute or noisy quarrel. I think often in, in prison, the stranglers and the wanglers become wranglers, I think. <laughs> they do not like each other. Fascinating. Anyway, right, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at those scores. Well, it's a pretty broad field. Anne and Lindsay, I thought you were doing really well. 45, that was a really good score. Oh. But now, <laughs> now I think it's rubbish. <laughs> Look, you're, you're way out ahead. Uh, Helen and Chris looking fantastic there. Uh, just 15, very, very good shout from Chris on Strangle. Um, and uh, yes, Stephen and Astrid, 26, not bad. Dean and Andy, 18, pretty good. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for words that end in angle. Dean, didn't Andy do well? He did very well. I'm hoping it kind of gives me a bit of a scope now so that if I do badly, we'll be OK. <laughs> the high scorers are Anne and Lindsay on 45. You want to be scoring 26 or less with this angle just to avoid becoming the high scorers. Obviously, everyone else has got to answer first. But uh, is words a subject you're comfortable with? Well, I talk a lot, so... Uh... <laughs> Good answer. Very good indeed. What are your hobbies, Steve? What are my hobbies? I have lots of different hobbies, but I'm kind of training to be a medium at the moment. No. Yes. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Well, your, your spirit guide wasn't, wasn't necessarily with you last time. Um, maybe I'm not as good as I thought, then. <laughs> <laughs> 
feel bad now because like I've just I've just I've dissed them. I've dissed your spirit guide. You Don't know what they're going to do to they're me. They're going to come and haunt you forever. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> Look forward to that. Anyway, 26 is what we want. A score of 26 or less. I'm kind of going to go for an obvious one, I think, but I'm hoping that because it's obvious, people won't think of it. Possibly. I like that. <laughs> Hide in the house. That's the last place they'll look. <laughs> I'm going to just go for dangle. You're going to go for dangle? Yeah. There's your red line. You come in below that red line. You are through to the next round. Let's hope you do. Let's see how many people said dangle. Oh. 42 people said dangle. That scores you 42, takes your total up to 60. You are now our high scorers. Richard, dangle. Uh, yeah, to hang loosely, swaying to and fro. Do you ever. <laughs> That's what. It's, it's what just, it means. It's just it's what, what it, it said means. in the book. Do you ever worry that your spirit guides are just taking the mick? <laughs> They're going, say, say dangle. It's a really good answer. <laughs> again, they'll be in the pub tonight going, I totally got them to say dangle. Like the, <laughs> this is just about the most obvious word I could think of. Helen, you did so well. 15 was what Chris got you in the last, in the last oh, pass. Chris did well. Well, you as a team done incredibly well. Uh, you have to score 44 or less with this answer to avoid becoming the high scorers. Have you got some good answers in your mind? Well, all the answers I had that I thought everybody would get were none of the th that I've got, so I hope I've got the right answers. Very good. <laughs> this is sounding very none promising. None of the ones they've said I even thought of. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. 44 or less is what we want from you, from this answer. I thought of quadrangle. Quadrangle. Yes. Very good. Here is your red line coming in. If quadrangle gets you below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see how many people said it. Quadrangle. It's good. Very well done. Quadrangle scores you 21, takes your total up to 36. Very impressive total there. Richard, quadrangle. Yeah, it's, really, it's really any figure with four angles and four straight sides, but more commonly used as a, as a courtyard surrounded by buildings. I thought of quadrangle when they asked me this question. So I'd have got 21 as well. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Good, My good spirit thing. guide said... <laughs> Do you know what? I was brutally murdered in a quadrangle. <laughs> you, can, you can have that. Wow. Your spirit guide's probably been on Spectre Morse. It's amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Astrid. Astrid, you are currently on 26. You have to score 33 to avoid becoming the high scorers. Have you got loads of good words ending in angle? No. Um, unfortunately, quadrangle was... Was the one. The one. Mm -hmm. um, so the only other one I can really think of that hasn't been done is a bit obvious, but I'm going to go for entangle. Entangle. You see, that's taken us on a bit of a new, in a bit of a new direction there. I like that. Very good. Entangle. Here's your red line. Below that, entangle sees you through to the next round. Let's see how many people said it. Entangle. Well done. <laughs> very, very good indeed. Entangle scored you two. Good answer. Gives you a total of 28. Uh, yeah, very good answer. In, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what entangle means, you know, roughly. <laughs> it uh, takes a long time. It's one of those words, you know what it means, but it takes a long time to describe. Well, nearly as long as explaining why you're not going to tell yeah, us I what it means. <laughs> very good. A brilliant total score there, 28. Very nice and low. Anne, your turn eventually. Have you had millions of ideas and you've just heard everybody say all the words you yeah, had? Yeah, and the quadrangle yeah. one was mine as well, oh. so if they've asked 100 in here, <laughs> we'd have all gone for that. Right, I've got a few left. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what you have to get, though. You have to score 14 or less, <laughs> otherwise you will overtake Dean and Andy and you'll be the high scorers and you'll be leaving us at the end of this round. That can't happen. <laughs> Please do badly. <laughs> 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 Very gracious of you there, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so... It probably is far too obvious, but the best one I can think of is Spangle. OK, Spangle. Here's your red line coming in. It's quite low, I'm afraid. Spangle has to get you below that red line. Let's see if it does. Let's see how many people said Spangle.
It had to be 14 or under. It was 14 on the oh. nose. That's fantastic. Oh. Spangle does it for you. Richard Spangle. Uh, very good. I mean, very similar to a, to a sequin, a Spangle, and uh, just got you there. Fantastic. So the losing pair are Dean and Andy. Richard, what should they have gone for? Uh, well, there were, out of those 72 words, there were 51 pointless answers. An awful lot of, uh, uh, you know, angles, pentangle, all, all that sort of thing. Uh, and you said spangle. If you, if you want a bespangle address, you can do. A spangle would have been pointless. And uh, Astrid, you said entangle. If you'd said disentangle or unentangle, both of those are pointless, would have got you £250. Let's take a look at uh, some of the more unusual words that were there. Uh, kangle, which is to dispute. Uh, crangle, which is to twist uh, or writhe or wriggle. Uh, garfangle, which is uh, a Half steak restaurant in London. Uh, <laughs> it's not really, it's a, it's a fish hook. Let's look at a few more. Uh, langle, langle, which is a thong or a rope. Meringle is another word for meringue, so you can have a lemon meringue pie. Quaturo uh, <laughs> de Quaturo de Cangle. That's how you pronounce that, Quaturo de Cangle. And that's a plain figure having 14 straight sides. Quinquangle, which is a, another word for pentangle, also a very good name for a Harry Potter character if you're watching J.K. Rowling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> touch angle, which is a worm bait used in fishing, as we all know, I see you all going, should have said touch angle. Uh, and twangle, which is uh, what I've been speaking for the last minute and a half. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the most obvious answers you could have given. Actually, we didn't see any of these, even, uh, even dangle's not there, you'd be pleased to hear. <laughs> these are the ones that most of our, the most of our 100 people said. Uh, in third, it's Tangle uh, with 53, uh, much worse than Entangle. Then Bangle with 57. What do you think is top? What's the Triangle, most? I should think. Let's take a little look. Triangle would have got you 82 points. Thank you very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score. I'm sorry, it's Dean and Andy. Again, <laughs> what is it with this first round? I don't know. Spirits, where are you now? <laughs> where are That's they? They're probably in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to say this was your second chance to get to the pointless final, so I'm afraid we, this really is goodbye, but uh, you have, have been fantastic contestants. Thanks very much for being on the show. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs now, it's time for round two. <laughs> now, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one of you is going to be leaving at the end of this round. You just have to make sure it's not you. Right, the category for round two is... Comic books. Comic books. Oh, Stephen looks pained. Chris looks delighted. No. No, not delighted. <laughs> I want to cry. Oh, well, that's good. There you are, all three of you, hating the category. That's brilliant. Um, comic books. Right, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question is, superheroes and their alter egos. Right. This is a brand new round on Pointless. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us what the superhero alter egos are. OK, Richard? Yeah, we're going to show you six alter ego names. All you've got to do is tell us who the superhero is. Obviously, as always in Pointless, there are a couple of obvious ones. They'll score very high points. A couple of much harder ones, which will get you very low points. If you give us a wrong answer, that'll be 100 points. So, very best of luck, and at home, see if you can get all six of them. Right, the first six are... Clark Kent, Billy Batson, Peter Parker, Scott Summers, James Howlett, Princess Diana. Anne, you're going to go first. We are looking for superheroes, alter egos. Do you read comic books at all? Not anymore. I've grown up a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> you say that. There'll be some people in their 40s and 50s saying, no, it's for grown-ups as well, comic books. Uh, I'm pleased I'm going first this time. <laughs> yeah, you are. Good. <laughs> yeah, you know some of the people on that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I know two. <laughs> you know two. Yeah. And I'm sure they're the most obvious, but I'm going to play safe. Yeah. Better play safe than get it wrong. So I'm going to go for Peter Parker, who is Spider-Man. You're going to go for Peter Parker, who is Spider-Man. Well, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Peter Parker. Sixty-five. That scores you sixty-five points, Richard. Uh, yeah, good answer, Peter Parker, a photographer for the Daily Bugle. 
by day and scaler of buildings by night. Excellent. Well done. 65 points. Astrid, how good is your comic book knowledge? Slim to none. Slim to none. Yeah. Was that one of the people you might have <laughs> known? One, one of the two. Yeah. OK. Um, Possibly the same two Anne knew. Yeah, probably. Oh, dear, Chris is now looking really nervous, <laughs> because they were probably the two that he knew as well. Um, I'm wondering maybe to risk it rather than be obvious. 100 points if you get it wrong. I don't, I don't want to discourage you. <laughs> You've got to it risk it. That's what this game's all about. Um, OK, I'm... I used to like X-Men. And I vaguely remember someone called Scott, but I don't know if his name is Scott Summers. So I'm going to go with him being Cyclops, but I don't know if that's Scott right. Scott Summers Cyclops is what you're saying. <laughs> let's see if Scott Summers is indeed Cyclops. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Very good. Brilliant answer. Five people knew that. That scores you five points. Richard, Scott Summers. Exactly. That's why it pays not to read books, but to read comic books, kids. Anyone who's watching <laughs> Scott Summers, exactly, he was Cyclops from the X-Men. Very good answer. Very well done. Right, Chris. Do I go safe or do I take a chance? Yeah, you tell me. Well, I think I know two of those, but I'm not certain which is the right one. So, uh, I'm going to play safe, I think, and go for Clark Kent, which is Superman. Well, let's see if that is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Superman. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that scores you 90 points. Richard, 90 points, that's quite, that's quite a high score in this. It's in quite this. high, isn't it? A lot of people know Clark Kent is Superman, even though he tries to keep it secret. Uh, it was, uh, he first appeared in Action Comic number 1 in 1938, and a copy of that was just sold for $1 million. Wow. Quite something. What was the other answer you, you were going to go for, Princess do you think? Diana. Well, who do you think Wonder Princess Woman? Diana is? Do you think Princess Diana is Wonder Woman? Yes. You're it? absolutely right. Oh, Absolutely no. right. And it would have scored you less than 90 points as well. <laughs> oh. Would have scored you five points, in fact. Oh, look at that. Should have taken a chance. Got to be brave sometimes. If Wonder Woman taught us anything, <laughs> so you've got to be brave. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the other two, Alexander? Any oh, ideas on uh, oh, Billy God, Batson and Jamie uh, Howlett? Billy, I've no idea. James Hap. Billy Batson was Captain Marvel, and that was actually a pointless answer, so well done if you got that. And uh, James Howlett is Wolverine, as yeah. a series of young boys are currently shouting at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Wow. Well, Stephen and Astrid, fantastic answer there from Astrid. Very good, looking great on five. <laughs> Helen and Chris, 90, you are way out in front. So, yes, Helen, you've got to dredge up all your comic book action hero knowledge for this next pass and uh, bring it to play. Um, Anne and Lindsay, well, not bad there, as it turns out, 65. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put some more comic book characters on the board. Here they are. We've got Bruce Wayne, Tim Drake, Bruce Banner, Tony Stark, Steve Rogers and Betsy Braddock. Remember, we are looking for superheroes and their alter egos, and you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Helen, how's that looking? Not very good. <laughs> Do you know any of those? Um, I know two of the names. Can you think of their alter egos? Um, one I'm not very sure about. One is definite, but that's going to be the one that's the highest. Yeah, I think I'll go for the other one. Very brave. Yes, but uh, Bruce Banner... Yes. ..I think is the Incredible Hulk. You are the high scorers. Anyway, so... So, uh, yes, there's no red line to come yeah. below. Bruce Banner, Incredible Hulk, let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Sixty-one, not bad. That scores you sixty-one, gives you a total of one hundred and fifty-one points. Yeah, good answer, Bruce Banner. Very well known. He'll be very pleased with that. Uh, which is good news, because I wouldn't want him to be displeased in any way whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I wonder what would happen. I don't know. If that, if that guy got angry. Oh, no, it doesn't bear thinking about. But very good answer. 
<laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Stephen. Well, I think I can go for 100, can't I? You can. Doesn't matter what you say, you are through to the next round. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, I was racking my brains to actually think of any more superheroes, let alone actually relate them to the name. Um, so I'm going to go Steve Rogers as Aquaman. Steve Rogers as Aquaman. Have you made that up? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Could be more made up. <laughs> OK, if you get this right, it's pointless. <laughs> yeah, that'd be amazing. Right, OK. Steve Rogers is Aquaman, says Steve. <laughs> let's see if he's right, and if he is, let's see how many people said it. Steve Rogers, Aquaman. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Couldn't matter less. You've scored 100, the maximum, because it is a wrong answer, but you still don't overtake our high scorers, Helen and Chris. Bad luck, Helen and Chris. I'm sorry. However, it's not all over yet. Lindsay, you are currently on 65. You have to score 85 or less to avoid becoming the high scorers. These names on the board behind me, do they mean anything to you or might they just be people who went to school with me? <laughs> I know Bruce Wayne and that's the only one I know. I wouldn't even hmm. hazard a guess at the others. So I'm going to go Bruce Wayne, uh, Batman. Right, you have to score 85 or less, as I say. Right. There's your red line, come below that. You are through to the next round. Well, let's see how it does. Bruce Wayne, Batman. <laughs> does it for you. Very good. 73 people knew that Bruce Wayne was Batman. Scores you 73, gives you a total of 138. Richard. Yeah, very good answer. Well done. Safely through to the head-to-head, -to -head, where there's an entertainment question, which is good news. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the others up there. So Bruce Wayne is Batman. Tim Drake uh, actually is Robin. Dick Grayson was originally Robin, but then, then it is uh, Tim Drake. Would have got you one point. Uh, Tony Stark, Alexander, do you know that? No idea. Tony Stark is Iron Man, uh, played by Robert Downey Jr. in the recent films. Uh, Steve Rogers, he's not Aquaman, he's Captain America. Oh. Oh. So close. Of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, and Betsy Braddock, she is Psylocke, a rare British superhero. That's a pointless answer, so very, very well done if you've got that at home. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, it's Helen and Chris. Bad luck. That wasn't. That really didn't play to your strengths, that, that one. not our it? round. No. Did either of your post offices sell comics? No. No. <laughs> I think you said, no, so we wouldn't have we sold, sold those. We sold a lot of spirits, Even but if no they comics. had, we wouldn't have been allowed to read them. You wouldn't have been allowed no, to read them? That's terrible. Yeah. Um, well, you've been fantastic contestants. Obviously, we will see you next time. Everyone gets two shots at the pointless final. And we'll look forward to welcoming you back then. And I hope you do even better. Get through to the head-to-head, -head, maybe the final itself. But thanks for playing. You've been great contestants. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. But the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Well done, Stephen and Astrid, Anne and Lindsay. You have made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to our final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £2,000. <laughs> Marvellous. You're going head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. The pair who get the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. All right, let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many EU member countries with German as an official language. Richard. Yeah, simply any country uh, that's a member of the EU that has German as an official language. It's a very short list. That would be a very long list if the Germans had had their way. Uh, <laughs> there are... There are... Is it still... Is it too soon? Uh, <laughs> there are four names on the list, so uh, see if you can get them all at home. OK, thank you, Stephen and Astrid, because you've played the best so far throughout the show, you get to go first. We are looking for German-speaking members of the EU. We've come to a decision. <laughs> Good. White smoke. <laughs> OK, what are we've, you going to say? We've decided upon Switzerland. Switzerland. As one of the four. 
said with a slightly scary degree of assertion. Very scary. <laughs> but, but good, I'm impressed by that. Um, Anne and Lindsay. There were four, there were four countries. We think Austria. OK, we have Switzerland, we have Austria. Stephen and Astrid said Switzerland first, so let's put that to the test first. Let's see if it's correct. If it is, how many of our 100 people said Switzerland? No! Ah. Wow. Anne and Lindsay said Austria. Let's see how many people said that. It only has to be correct you to win this point. It is correct. 52. So, after the first question, it's 1-0 to Anne and Lindsay. Richard? Yeah, tough luck, even though they do speak German in uh, Switzerland. Switzerland's not a member of the EU. Let's take oh, yeah. a look at uh, the answers you could have given. There were a couple of answers that would have beaten Austria. Belgium would have got you 11. Luxembourg, they speak German, 14. And uh, at the top of the list, uh, there is Germany with 82, which slightly begs the question, there's 18 people there who don't think they speak German in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of Duran Duran as they could. Richard, Duran Duran. Members. Yeah, we're looking for the, uh, for the first name and surname of any of the five original members of Duran Duran uh, from their, their peak years in the 80s. You're a big Duran Duran fan? Hey, listen, the reflex is an only child <laughs> waiting in the rain, I think. Yeah, other than that, though, you're a Duran Duran fan? The reflex... <laughs> no, and every little thing the reflex does leaves you answered with a question mark. I know that. So you're a Wham fan, you're saying? No, no. Um, of course, I'm a, I was a massive Duran Duran fan. Anyway, oh. sorry, we're, what are we doing? Playing pointless. <laughs> OK, Anne and Lindsay, you get to go first this time. If I've got it right, I'd like to thank my old schoolmates who loved Duran Duran and I didn't. And they adored John Taylor. John Taylor. Astrid. <sighs> not um, looking happy <laughs> at all with this. Yeah, not at all. Can't, you can, can't say I can even name a song, let alone any members. Were you born when Duran Duran was around? When was that? I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> We've had John Taylor. I'm just that was the one we knew as well. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know if this is a really stupid answer, but seeing as we don't this, know any, we well, might as well. Um, if it is, it'll be really obvious, so we're just going to go with Simon Le Bon. Is that his name? Oh, Who knows? good Who punt. Know? Look at that. Good Very good. Simon Le Bon, you're saying. Right, well, Anne and Lindsay, you have gone with John Taylor. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. John Taylor. Your classmates served you well. John Taylor scores only 18. Very good. Stephen and Astrid have gone for Simon Le Bon. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, how many people said Simon Le Bon? It's right. <laughs> oh, well done. That scores you 40. So, <clears throat> after two questions, it's 2-0 to Anne and Lindsay. Richard, Simon Le Bon. Makes you feel old, doesn't it? Doesn't it, though? When people know nothing, people it's literally don't know never Durand heard Durand of Duran Duran names. Durand. It's like when we were 20, people would talk about Bill Haley and the Comets. I think it's the same... No, is it the same distance? Yeah, I think so. That, oh, yes, they could name all of Glenn Miller's band. <laughs> 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 I'll show you all five here. It's much more for a generation of the rest of us. Andy Taylor was the, uh, the most obscure of all, with nine points. Then Roger Taylor with 11, not the same one who's in Queen. Nick Rhodes with 14. John Taylor with 18. And right at the top, Simon Le Bon with 40. Well, there we are, in straight sets. Anne and Lindsay dance through to our final. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, is Stephen and Astrid. Bad luck. Yes, it was uh, Switzerland. That you was said awful. it. That you were so confident. Really Europe. means that I now can't show my dad this. Because <laughs> he'll laugh at me. <laughs> well, no, I tell you what, you can show him the next one when you come back, of course, because everyone gets two <laughs> shots. Um, <laughs> anyway, you've been fantastic contestants. Well done for making it all this way. We'll see you next time. Better luck then. Thank you. But for Anna and Lindsay, it's time for our pointless final and the chance to win £2,000.
So congratulations, Anne and Lindsay. You've fought up all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. Yeah. Very exciting. Now, you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,000. <laughs> very impressive. The rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one could think of. Now, we haven't had any pointless answers today. All you need to do is find one to go home with that money. But first, you've got to choose a category from these three options, OK? Your options are movie stars, universities, chemistry. It's going to be chemistry, isn't it? Oh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> movie stars, universities, chemistry. Go Which one stars, do you want? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, movie stars. OK, let's find out what the question is. So we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Harrison Ford films as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which Harrison Ford gets an acting credit. We're not looking for documentaries and short films or things where he's played himself, but uh, animation, things like that, they, they do count. So any film where Harrison Ford has received an acting credit. OK. Thank you, Richard. You now have up to one minute to come up with those three answers. And all you need to win that 2,000 quid is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. I did the Star Wars mm. film, so... Fugitive. But, but that's going to be... It, it I want to know on that. Yeah. Um, that's one, then. But it was, it was recacting role. I did really? the one with the hat and the whip. What's that called? The, um... Raiders of the Last Ark and all that. That was him, <laughs> oh, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but they're going to be Yeah. Mm, there's loads of them there. There's lots of them, but unless it's just that one film. Right. Like Jewel on the Nile. Ah. And actually name the film. Yeah, OK. Any more that you know? Temple of Doom. Right, Indiana yeah. Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. Um, Harrison Ford, Harrison Ford, Harrison Ford. Is the, seconds. Is the Fugitive a recent one? Cos no, I don't know old. it. Very old. I think we ought to use that as one of, one. One of them. So that, yeah. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Doom. And one more. What was that, a hat and whip one? Um, that was an Indiana Jones one. That was, oh, um, the, uh, yeah, the Indiana Jones uh, one. Jewel in the Nile. Um, we need one well, more. No, that would still be it, Jewel in the Nile. That's another... Oh. Ten another seconds. One. Yeah. Those three. Those three. OK. Yeah. I'm just trying okay. to think if there's any more. Okay. You got three? Yes. <laughs> See if you can think of another one. Oh. There's your minute up. <laughs> right, time up. We were looking for Harrison Ford films. I now need your three answers. OK, so we know he's been in all of the Indiana Jones films. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go with Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yes. What was that other one? Indiana Jones, The Jewel on the Nile. Yeah. And that one. <laughs> and also, he's been in The Fugitive, which is one of my favourite films, but it's quite an old one, I think. Which of those do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? The Fugitive, I think. OK, yeah. let's put that one last. Which is your least confident Temple one? Temple of Doom, probably. Probably Temple of Doom. OK, so Indiana Jones, let's put them up on the board. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Then you had Indiana Jones and the Jewel on the Nile. And then you had The Fugitive. There they are. We were looking for Harrison Ford films, and you've given us your three answers in rising order of confidence. Let's put your first one to the test. Your first one is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win that £2,000. OK, you've only got three shots at this. One of them has to be pointless. Let's see if this first one is. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, you say. Let's see how many people said Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. As I say, this has to go all the way down to zero and be a pointless answer for you to win that jackpot. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, sadly... <laughs> sadly, is not a pointless answer. You still have two shots left. Next one, Indiana Jones and the Jewel on the Nile. Are you confident about this one? I'm hoping I've got the wording right. I can't even remember <laughs> it being an Indiana Jones film, to be honest, but... Go with Anne. What would you do <laughs> with... Her. What would you do with 2,000 quid? Well, we've promised breakfast to our work colleagues. <laughs> Blimey. We can't be seen what? to... Not How many work breakfast. colleagues have you got? Well, there's only two of them in our office with us. <laughs> wow, champagne breakfast, I'm guessing. No, we're thinking canteen. Canteen. <laughs> OK, it might be a little bit of change. I don't know what your canteen does for breakfast, but... Very good, OK. 
your second answer was Indiana Jones and the Jewel on the Nile. OK, let's see if Indiana Jones and the Jewel on the Nile is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Ah! Bad luck. I'm afraid Indiana Jones and the Jewel on the Nile is not a pointless answer. It's not, in fact, a correct answer, as it turns out. But we'll find out more about that from Richard shortly. You only have one final chance to win today's jackpot. We are looking for Harrison Ford films. Your third and final answer was The Fugitive. This was the one you had the most faith in. Yeah. And you hadn't heard of it. No. It's looking very promising. I'm hoping so. Looking very promising. Half of you hadn't heard of it. My dad will be going, I know it. <laughs> well, we have to hope this is a pointless answer. This has to be one that none of our 100 people said for you to win that jackpot. Let's put it to the test. Let's see how many people said The Fugitive. This is your third and final shot at the jackpot of £2,000. It has to go all the way down to pointless for you to win it. Oh! Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £2,000, which rolls over to the next show. But you have been fantastic, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. Yay. <laughs> now, Richard, what answers should they have given? Well, they shouldn't have given Jewel on the Nile. Jewel of the Nile was a Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner movie. It's easy to get Michael Douglas and Harrison Ford mixed up. Especially yes. in the dark. Uh, there, were, there, there are a whole bunch of uh, pointless answers here, some of which are, are fairly well known. Let's take a look at some of them. Any of these would have won you the money. So well done if you've got any of these ones at home. Uh, American Graffiti, which is where he was uh, oh, first uh, spotted, Harrison Ford. Extraordinary Measures, which came out in 2010 as a, a big flop firewall. Let's take a look on the next page. Uh, Heroes, K-19, The Widowmaker, uh, Sabrina, the remake of Billy Wilder's Sabrina, he was in with Julia Ormond. Uh, six Days, Seven Nights, which was about a half-board holiday he had in Falaraki. <laughs> uh, the Devil's Own, uh, which was with Brad Pitt, I think, and Frisco Kid with Gene Wilder. All of those are pointless answers. OK, thank you, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Anne and Lindsay. It's been great having you on the show, but thank you both for playing. You've been fantastic contestants. Thank you. Thank you. So nobody has won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we'll be playing for £3,000. Join us next time to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.